What's up, everybody? <laughs> Trip Smith here in this adventure. Uh, it's gonna be cold and it's gonna be windy. We're gonna be on the skiff for three days down in the Mobile, Tennessee River Delta. We have a hundred plus mile trip planned just through all these kind of backwaters in the Delta. We're gonna be checking out a few different things, like some cool camping platforms, some Indian mounds, some big old harbor and like port and stuff to explore and check out. Hope we get to see some real huge barges and big ships. All kinds of cool stuff. This is going to be our first trip sleeping on the skiff in the new arrangement. First week trip with the new outboard. Figure since it was cold and windy, let's do this trip in some protected waters, kind of explore the backwoods instead of my coastal trip that I had planned. So I just started planning this trip like three days ago. <laughs> so let's go. And I'm already forgetting stuff. You guys wait. Like I had to go to Walmart and get my tripod, but um, it's going to be interesting. All right, let's get rolling. I'll fill y'all in on the rest. So to start, we're going to be navigating through some pretty shallow waters and of course, very unfamiliar waters I've never been here before, just studied a few maps. So we have to get to the river where we have a few miles to go and the water's really muddy and murky from all the wind. So we're not going to be able to see, you know, shallow water as easy as we normally would. I just started running and I'm already getting pretty wet. All my pants here. So I'm going to put on some waterproof pants. Thank God I brought some. <laughs> okay, so I've gotten out of the channel a little bit because the markers around here are few and far between and they're not even markers, they're just like PVC pipes sticking up. So what I did is I pulled my phone out, I got on Google Maps, I remember looking at the map earlier and you can see the channel and I can see my position on Google Maps and I maneuvered over to the channel. And I got my frog togs on. There's some old antique frog tog pants. I still haven't figured out why there's water in that compartment, but I think it's because the ramp was steep when I backed in. And probably just came up in there a little bit. I don't think there's anything in there that you can't dry. But you got this marker right here, and you got a log or something over there. And another marker that way, and one that way, but then you got all kind of crap everywhere. It's not a good spot if you're not familiar. And then if I run aground, it's going to be freezing cold if I have to get in the water. Always an adventure. It's just beginning. Stick with me, folks. There's a lot of factors that come together to make this a challenge. <laughs> a lot of them that are working against me. But I've got a wheel and a drive, hopefully, overcome. waters where you camp for the night. Somewhere. Woo! Gonna get out of this wind, it's so freezing. Hope it's deep enough. Should be. Or I hope it is. I don't know. It better be. All right. It's not as windy in here, it's much nicer. <laughs> so one of the cool things about the Delta down here is the area has done a lot of things to kind of help paddlers and uh, I guess adventurers, more so paddlers, but they have a couple paddling trails down here and they have these nice shelters set up where you can paddle to and camp in them. Well, I'm motoring to this one. And I'm probably gonna camp in it or beside it tonight. To, oh wow, you can see it. See right over there? You're supposed to have reservations, but I don't have any reservations, but I don't think anyone's gonna be out in this weather. 
I don't think I'm gonna run into many people or, you know, mess anybody up. There's a lot of ducks out here just cruising around. Wow, that's pretty nice. Let's see if I can get this tripod to do it. It's worth it, darn. Uh. Check that out. That's pretty nice. All right, I gotta spin the boat around, get a bow into the wind. All right, let me tie her off. Pretty scared, although I am gonna kind of scare it a little better for the night. I don't want this to be kind of banging around to the change of the wind. But check out this. Is this part of the Barker Canoe Trail? It's the Yancey Branch Camp Shelter. Oh wait, use of this site is limited to non-motorized vessels only. Come on. Sorry. But check it out, I mean, it's super nice. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's open. This is pretty cool, got your little a little cook table here and the inside a little bit of a windbreak let's check it out although it's, a lot of the screens are busted out or some of the screens are busted out but it is protected from the wind for sure i'm probably going to take take advantage please leave it better than you found it i'll do that i'll do some cleaning and stuff in here you know anything to put off having to get back out there in the freezing cold in the morning this is a primitive platform. There's no power, no water, or anything like that, but you don't really need it. Uh, any hammock hooks? I know someone's gonna ask that. Uh, I don't see hammock hooks. Could you hang a hammock in here? Oh wait, here we go. Here's a hammock hook here and there. So yeah, yeah, you could hang a hammock. Is it spaced right? Let's see here. One, two. Yeah, yeah. So you, you can hang a hammock in here nicely. Just one, but you could probably fit. I mean, you could, fit, you could sleep six people in here without too much trouble. I mean, two or three would be better. One, even better. <laughs> Looks a lot better than that. There's a lot more color in that sunset than y'all can see. I don't really get it. Come on. Well, we've got a beautiful sunset tonight. Of course, it's still cold, still windy, but it's getting dark, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get all my camping stuff out of the boat and just bring it on in. But I do have a nice homemade dehydrated meal for dinner tonight. So I'm kind of excited about that. But I kind of worked hard, harder than I should have on making the dehydrated meals, but I'll explain that to you on in a minute. So, all right, let me get all this stuff out of the boat. All right, y'all, first thing I want is some good food in my belly. Now, on this trip, I have a lot of like new little pieces of gear. Some are pretty small and not very extravagant, but they're pretty interesting and I think they're gonna just make things a lot easier for me. And I'm excited to share those with y'all. One of those things is my food. And I made my own dehydrated meals. It's a, a reusable like silicone Ziploc. So I'm kind of excited about using that. And I got these and I've been using them around the house and just for all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, I originally thought they'd be great for this, but they've been handy for a lot of other stuff. So, so if you hadn't already, I encourage you to check those out. All right, let's get the alcohol stove out. The old cat can stove you guys have seen me use for years if you've been watching for that long. And a lot of you have. With the windscreen, definitely need that today. Although, in here, the, the screen does help block wind a little bit, but these walls here really do help. So, it's, I'm hiding right here behind it. It's very nice. All right, so where's my lighter? I had it out, I think, I thought. Did I not? That just rhymed. Ooh, my hands are a little chilly. Hard to grip the water bottle. There we go. Give that a few minutes. All right, it just stopped burning. So we're gonna dump our water right in here on our food. We're gonna lift that. Yeah, I think it actually boiled. Fantastic. Uh, we'll go all of it. I 
hope the silicone bag stands up to the boiling water. You know, I didn't. I guess we'll find out. Surely it'll be fine. Usually you have to use a freezer bag. So I'm going to take her, drop her in my jacket, and kind of cuddle her up. Now we'll give her about 15 minutes, and we'll grub out. Great news. Let me straighten you up. Dinner looks delicious. Oh, it's beautiful. Just gonna kind of work it. Break up all the little chunks of dehydrated uh, diced tomatoes, chili powder, and chili sauce, I think. That's what's in it, along with some bell peppers, onions, and ground beef. Oh, it's nice and warm. Everything feels good and soft. Oh, it's gonna be, oh, it's so warm. Oh, I could just do this. Oh, look. Oh, snap. <laughs> okay, all right. It says it's food safe, freezer safe, travel friendly, hand wash only. Yes, you wash and reuse these. This is a 30 fluid ounce bag. Avoid storing hot foods. Surely it'll be all right. I mean, if you can't boil water in it, what good is it? You guys can check it out. Look at there. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Oh, it smells good. Taste. It's good. Probably gonna sit a little longer, rehydrate a little more, but it's good to me. We got onions, green, and red bell peppers in there. Now, looking back, the way that I made this, I couldn't have done it a lot easier. Basically, I took all the ingredients and I dehydrated them separately. So the ground beef, the vegetables I did separately, and then the sauce I did separately. If I could go back, like I'd done years ago, I would just cook it all down and you know make a regular chili with all the ingredients mixed together and just dehydrate that whole thing as one instead of making the different ingredients and then mixing them before I leave on my trip. I mean, you still get the same result, but it probably would taste a little better if it was all cooked together, you know, like a real chili. But it gets the job done. All right, I'm gonna enjoy this. Then we have a very unique dessert I'm gonna share with you guys. I tell you one darn thing. This Walmart tripod is about friggin' worthless. All right, dessert time. My tripod doesn't fall again. I need to turn this on so I can read. I had this company contact me and say, hey, uh, we do these little uh, monthly subscription boxes where we send you snacks from a different country. And I was like, oh, wow. Because my wife had just talked about it a few weeks before, like, hey, we should get one of these subscriptions for our niece. I was like, yeah, that might be a good idea. And lo and behold, look, a company contacted me and said, hey, Trip, want to send you a box with some desserts, put it on a video. I said, sure, because I like some, some treats and snacks, and I, I thought it would be cool. So I got one, and the country was... I forgot where it was from, but here's a quick shot of me opening the box at the boat ramp right before I launched today. Serbia and Croatia. So one of the first snacks I'm gonna have that is the uh, this oh, golly Tacova Euro Cream Block Euro Cream Bar Milk and Chocolate Product with Hazelnut. 
Ingredients are, uh, oh, got it. Co cocoa with K's, tabla, cocoa tabla. There we go. We got some uh, Sagino Brazino. We got some Emulgator, Sun Cocritivo, some Cocoa Mascala. Let's try it. I usually eat really good, so sometimes I cheat, but I'm actually like everything else I brought on this trip is really healthy food and in line with my diet. So, my diet. If you guys want to know more about my diet and how I work out, I got a new page on my website, tripsmith.live slash lifestyle. Go check it out. I'll link to it below. Check it. Oh, look at this. It's got like a little white layer. Mmm. Mmm. Holy moly. It's just a flat block of chocolate with a cream in the middle. Shoot. Why don't we have this? Awesome. I've got a few other treats I'll be trying throughout the rest of this adventure. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link below. With a coupon code, you get like 15% off or something. You would code TRIPSMITH, I believe it is. I do encourage y'all to get this. We're probably going to get one for my niece. For real. The last time I forget my freaking tripod. She better be. Alright, there's no light in here. So I'm about to blow up my favorite lantern. Boom. Ta-da, we have light. This is Lucy Lantern by M Power that I always talk about. Fantastic. It's even rechargeable. Solar on top. Or you can charge it via USB. Very nice, very handy. Alright, I'm about to toss all my stuff into the tent. I have a journal and a book that I'm reading right now. I'm gonna just sit back, get in there, out of the wind, and enjoy some reading. It's just really cold and miserable. I mean it's not miserable. It's nice. <laughs> it's really cold and windy. Maybe a little miserable. <laughs> but it's 710, and I'm about to go ahead and climb in there and just brush my teeth. And uh, I'll be basically ready for bed. <laughs> miserable. <laughs> I mean, this isn't the most pleasant adventure I've been on. Like, the last few I've been on have just been cold and horrible. <laughs> I'm ready for summertime. But hey, I've got a hungry audience who wants to see some adventures, and good or bad, I gotta go when I have time off from work. <laughs> so, like last week, it would have been a lot nicer down here. <laughs> this week, it sucks. <laughs> here in my little dry box, I keep a lot of electronics. Here's a charger and batteries for my camera. Boom. By the way, this is the DJI Osmo action camera. In here I have my OutXC charger. That'll go in there with me. I'll take my headphones in there with me because I want to listen to a podcast. And then I'll just need a charger for my phone. All right. I'll see y'all in there, hopefully, in some warmth here in a few minutes. All right, I would give y'all some sort of tour of my tent. I'll do that in the morning in the better lighting. So, good night. And uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to have a pleasant night. I'll probably be pretty warm in here. I'm very much looking forward to getting out of the wind and getting warm. So, <laughs> I think I'll sleep well. All right, good night, folks. Good morning, everybody. Right now it's 7.15. I've been up since about 6, just kind of laying here chilling, letting it maybe warm up a little bit. Sun come out. Got pretty cool last night, but I will say that I slept very well. I was warm. I was comfortable. It was nice. It was, it was really nice. Ah. Whew. All right. My insulation last night on the top of me I had a little down throw quilt. I have my Aegis Max sleeping bag. I have my sleeping bag liner. I stayed pretty warm. Under me as insulation and padding. I have my Thermo Z light and this uh, inexpensive inflatable pad. I was warm till about maybe six o'clock this morning. That might have been what woke me up. 
my bottom insulation just was failing. But I mean, it wasn't, wasn't terrible. Whew. Man. Look at there, right where I left her. Well, it's 9.45. I've packed up my camp, got all my stuff pretty much ready to go put on the boat. But it's still cold. Like, it's not even 40 degrees. I mean, it's 39 outside, so I'm not in a major rush. And it's still windy, so I'm just kind of huddled up in my little shelter here. So we're going to get a little bit warmer, then we're going to head out. We may do like 50 miles or something today, which is a pretty good piece, but it's not that bad when you're on a skiff, you know, running 25, 30 mile an hour which is easily doable. The only bad part is the cold and the wind. So I'm just waiting on it to kind of warm up a little bit, but it's gonna be an interesting day because we're going to check out some uh, like Indian mounds that are out here in the Delta, like on these little islands. So it's supposed to be pretty interesting. So I'm excited about that, I guess. I'm, I'm really excited about it just warming up a little bit more because gosh, it's just cold. I'm telling you, it's cold. And when I don't have to get out in it, I'm not going to. So I've just been kind of in here doing some squats and some push-ups and pull-ups and dips and all. I've been exercising trying to keep my blood pumping and to stay warm and to be a little bit productive. And I haven't eaten. I'm going to wait. I'm going to fast today for a little while. I don't know how long. Uh, once we get on the water, we may wait till we stop. Uh, I don't know. I'm going I'm to fast. I'm not, I'm not eating. All right, so I noticed a little problem when I got on the boat. Look, awesome, don't I? Yeah, we got a little issue with our fuel, and fuel is important. Fuel issues are bad. So what is this issue? Well, I have this classable fuel tank here that I've used in the past on the Ginu. Well, before I left Dothan yesterday, I filled it up. I think it's about a 10 gallon capacity. I put eight gallons in it, and I laid it in the back of my truck to see if I was getting any leaks whenever I got here. I noticed there was just a small amount of leakage and I thought it was coming from around the cap. Whenever I placed this on the boat, you know, I normally would have laid it down or something, but I stood it up to try and, you know, keep fuel from leaking out of the cap. But I'm noticing this morning that I see moisture around this seam here and the seam over there. So I kind of started messing with it a little bit and I could actually see like a little bit of bubbles and stuff. So it's leaking around this seam. And also, I look on the bottom of the floor of the boat, and I see a little bit of tent and stuff. So what does that mean? Apparently, we're leaking at the seams. So the best solution for that is to run the boat, you know, use up fuel in our main tank so that we can take the fuel out of here and put it in our main tank. Whenever I was looking at buying these a few years ago with the Ginu, uh, I bought this one because it was affordable. It's like 60 bucks or so. But there were some that were like 250 bucks. I was like, golly, and what's the difference? I bought this and was happy with it, but now this may be the difference. Uh, don't buy the $60 collapsible fuel tank. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get all this stuff packed in the boat and we'll get underway. It actually feels really good since I got out here in the sun. Oh, it's nice. It is, it's really nice actually. Actually, it's not really nice. It's just, it's a lot better than how sucky it was yesterday and this morning. <laughs> well, it was a nice shelter. We did indeed leave it cleaner than we found it. This would be good staying if you're paddling and stuff. Yeah, there's a duck flying right there. Huh. Alright, get the old sim rad going. I'm doing my best to calculate my mileage pretty accurately on this trip so I can calculate my fuel mileage uh, so that I'll know for future trips. That's a pretty important thing to know, especially when you got a fuel leak. <laughs> Alright, we're coming out of some big water. It's a little windier, of course, but it's not too bad to chop in here. So that's a positive thing. Yeah. 
down there. <laughs> Apparently not. Come here, baby. Ah. Shallow right here. All right, this one they call Gravina Island, but it's really shallow, so we gotta get a heck of out of here. Nice, amazing. If the weather was better, we'd hang out, but it's not. All right, so what it is, there's a very well defined sandbar that's about 150 yards out from the bank, but because between there and the bank, we could maneuver, but it was, as soon as we started to head out, we would hit the bar. So we just had to mosey on down and keep kind of bumping it and coming back off until we found a way out. That's one bad thing about this murky water is you can't see how shallow it is. I like beautiful clear water a lot better. All right, it's 12 o'clock. I'm kind of getting ready for lunch, but uh, let's keep cruising. I'm trying to find a spot to stop for lunch. Maybe a limb or something to tie up to. My work. Oh man, I got the kill switch on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Ugh. Oh, get off my boat, nasty line. Oh man. You're kidding me. <laughs> Somebody's darn fishing line. God almighty, set hook right there. All right, let's find a better spot. We don't want that all over. Man, I got my boat all nasty. Done. Set hook done drug over my boat. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna cruise up by a little better spot. to Barlow Landing. I guess we'll just kind of tie it to the dock here and have us a little lunch. So this is a nice little spot. We've got the boat docked here. It's still blowing, but I'm about to get some lunch, something to eat. Stop blowing. I'm keeping all my food and water in the cooler on this trip. Let's see what we got for breakfast, actually. Because we've been fasting since uh, our dessert last night. I'm going to start with some fancy sardines, a kind bar. I'm going to do a couple big fatties. And we're also going to have some three jerks filet mignon jerky. And maybe one of the little snacks from the little snack box from a different country. But I do always start my days with a can of sardines. First thing I break my fast with because it's super healthy. Lots of good vitamins and minerals that your body will absorb quickly. And a can of sardines. The filet mignon is good, but I think the fatties are better. I need about a million of these. These are awesome because they're made with grass-fed beef and pork without antibiotics. No nitrates, no MSG, and gluten-free. Sweetwood Smokehouse. Need you as a sponsor, by the way. Dessert. Oh, I like the. I kind of like the banana. We're going with the banana. Banana co. Hope it tastes like banana. Look at that. I mean, it's a little uh, degraded, but that's okay. Mm. Mm. 
That's wild. It's like a taffy, but like frozen banana, but it's not frozen. And like a crunchy taffy. Mm. You ever had a banana that was on a stick and then dipped in chocolate and then put in a freezer? It's kind of like that. I have one of those in El Salvador. Very unique. I like it. One thing that I've learned is my GPS, the maps on there, they're not as detailed as they need to be, so I'm going to have to invest in something like uh, Navionics or Navionics, something like that. It's about a 200 something dollar memory card that goes in here that puts a bunch of good maps on your GPS. Yeah, these are all really basic. Actually, where I'm at right now is not even a creek. It's not even, it's not even shown on here. We got a dock up here. Surely we're not that lucky. No, that's somebody's property. Darn it. I thought that might have been the Indian Mounds. Wow, they got a nice spot. All right, I gotta figure out where these Indian Mounds are, where the entrance to this hiking trail is. I might have passed it. I don't know, I gotta find out. All right, yeah, I think I passed it, so I got some coordinates right here. I'm gonna put these into my GPS and see exactly where it's at. I'm having what is probably a rookie mistake, and that is my numbers and digits don't match the input here on the GPS. I mean, they do really, really close, but there's a little bit of difference, and I'm not sure how to transfer that difference. But, I mean, I still put one in, and I'm, like, really close to it, so I think we're okay. All right, well, I spotted something that's, like, barely maybe possibly a trail but it's not like an obvious place like this is where it's at here's the trail to the indian mounds it's like i think that's it i would thought there might be a sign or a marker or something but there's nothing you look like right up in there i think there's a trail there i mean barely so we're gonna tie the boat up somewhere and get up there all right, got the boat secured to a tree up there and a vine here. Really, we're in a we're in a pretty good eddy right here in this bend of the river, so it's not much water movement here. But if you look right over here, you can see what might be a trail. See, it looks like maybe something's coming in out of the water there, and it looks like a clearing back there with a trail. So we're about to uh, take off all of our foul weather gear and we're gonna hit the trail. Alright. I think she'll be good right there. Let's see what we can see. Lots of deer tracks. <laughs> Looks like a friggin' highway here. Oh man, and I'm wearing Crocs. Got it. Oh crap. Got another one. Oh wait, where's the trail go, Trip? Slow down. How are we getting across here? Reckon that's hard ground right there? Hope so. 
Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Holy moly. I was just jogging along. Look over here, there's a friggin' mountain. I mean, basically, this is all flat around here. The Bottle Creek site. This is a site to the second largest mound center in Alabama. Civic and ceremonial complex that dominated the Mobile, Tennessee Delta from AD 1250 to 1500. 18 mounds along with canals and residential areas that covered much of the northern end of the island. All right, we're going up. This ain't no little mound, y'all. This is pretty wild. And these were seriously built by the Indians. I guess they literally piled this like bucket load by bucket load. Oh yeah, and it's perfectly flat on the top. Oh. It's a big old hill. Whoa. How far down that is? Wow. Pretty wild. Maybe this will give you some perspective. It's got a bunch of flat land, and all of a sudden it raises up. Big old mound. And you're back to flat land. All right, well now I'm headed back to the boat. We need to figure out where we're gonna camp tonight. If we're gonna camp here, if we're gonna move a little further. Definitely don't need to be navigating these, these rivers and creeks without light. It's already sketchy enough as it is. There's a lot of logs and stuff down and uh, just things sticking up out of the freaking water and you don't know where, what's right under the water. So it's a, it's a struggle. All right, we still got some light left, so we're gonna make some more miles and cruise on all the way to the Mobile River, and then we'll find a little creek or something to get back up in. And plus, we don't have service here, so it'd be nice to have service on the phone in case I wanna go live or post Instagram and stuff like that. So, we're gonna keep cruising. One thing I like to bring along when I bring a lot of water are these collapsible canteens. This is the Nalgene right here. This is about 96 ounces. What it holds are probably about a little over 100 in here. So I'm just gonna transfer from here into my real Nalgene and these are nice because as you drink more of your water these take up less and less space in your storage and you know I like to be efficient with my storage and with everything so I like these now it takes up less volume in my cooler with no ice be careful when it's cold I know I have a tendency to drink less water and not stay as hydrated so I have to keep reminding myself drink drink so don't forget to drink So now we're out on the, I think this, this is the Tennessee River. I don't know, we're on the big commercial river. This is where we got a big port and stuff several miles down. That's our first barge. As I was coming around the bend, all I could see was just, I don't know, it looked like a bridge or a causeway going across. Then as I got close, I was like, oh crap, that's a freaking barge. I just had to hit to the right of him. Pretty cool. So definitely keep your eyes out for that. I'm glad it wasn't making a huge wake and stuff. It's one thing I was kind of excited to see is stuff like that. And could you imagine like being a crew on one of those for a week? I think that'd be something fun, you know, to do for a week. <laughs> There's no telling what all you would learn. All right, so we're just easing on down. I don't know how far we're gonna go, but we'll find somewhere to camp. I don't know. We'll go a little further. But the sun is getting a little low. Yeah, you know, we just need to go to the next spot. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Just off the beaten path, nice and protected, out of the wind. <laughs> Super important. Hi, <laughs> right, Dane, there's me a lawnmower up in there. 
Yeah, that's what we need. All right, lawnmower. <laughs> How did he get up in there? <laughs> what was he doing up there? <laughs> wild night. Just wild night. That's like an old aluminum boat. I could probably tie up somewhere in there. I don't think that's been used in many a years. I think we may just do that. All right, now it's time to show you guys how the bivy sets up here on the front of the boat. Here's my little uh, PVC pipe slash homemade cargo net contraption and my bivy. And there you have it. The bivy set up right on the deck of the boat. And that's only a, like a $90 bivy. That's the Gear Top Ultralight Bivy 2. So this has some pretty good reviews on Amazon and on YouTube. So this is what I plan on taking to the Florida Keys and all my other skip trips where I plan on sleeping on the boat because it's just so simple to sleep on the boat versus trying to find somewhere suitable where you can safely anchor the boat and hang a hammock or have a tent and be allowed to camp. But like this, all I have to find is a sheltered area, you know, just some protected water and I can camp. So we basically just turned the skiff into a yacht. Hmm. Dinner tonight is the same as last night, chilly. And I noticed, I think my water was hotter today when I poured it in. And if you could tell, the bag, it's not like square anymore. It's got a bulge in it. <laughs> That's where the hot water hit. And it kind of deformed my bag. So, But I think the next option I may go with is get like a little jar that I can reuse. I have one actually that I keep my green tea in. But I mix it in my matcha every day. And I can just use the bags just to hold the ingredients. And it'll make it easier to eat out of too. Oh, I could just leave it right there. I know some of you guys are probably wondering, Trip, why aren't you eating a pack of gourmet? Well, I went to make another order, and to be honest with you, the prices were a little high. I think they were like $12 or something a meal. Then I looked back to the last time that I bought some, which was, you know, a few years ago, and I paid like $8 each or something or seven dollars each or something the price went up quite a bit so I was like okay well I'm not gonna buy that because I just think that's you know I could probably do better make my own so that's what I did and I really enjoy it too because you know I'm kind of stickler about my diet and I can make just what I want in here and it's pretty doggone cheap I don't know what I got in this but I mean I bought the ground beef on sale so pretty cheap that is so good. Everything's better when you're out here camping. So get out there. All right, dessert. We're pulling out some more treasures from the mystery subscription snack box. Check these out. It's a Keston dessert. I don't know. It's got a picture of a hazelnut on it, which I like hazelnut. Mm. Is that like a amoxicillin? You know the, the pink medicine you should get, Amoxyl, whatever, when you were a kid? You remember how awesome it was? <laughs> this is what that tastes like. No kidding. <laughs> how cool. <laughs> I love it. It's freaking awesome. All right. Well, this one, Dorina Kex. Once you get to the English version, it says milk chocolate with biscuits. Uh-oh, low battery. Let's go. Hurry up. Okay, here we go. We got a chocolate bar. It's got like some little crunches in it. And the cold is killing my batteries quick. Mm. Very awesome. It's like a chocolate bar with cookies crumbled up in it. Like chunks of cookies. I'm about to eat the whole thing. How awesome. Dude, anybody would love one of these subscriptions for real. I may get one for my niece and for me. <laughs> Not for my kids. Mmm. Golly. It's really just a lot of fun because I like to experience, you know, funky food. You guys know I eat some weird stuff. So I like to experience, you know, different flavors and tastes. And this junk is certainly that. I will say it, it's slightly a challenge to get all the stuff and blow up the air mattress and stuff uh, on the boat. But it's not that bad. It's very doable. Now, it would be a challenge if it were raining. Because then I had to, you know... Uh, toss all the stuff in here, jump in really quick, zip it up really fast, and then work while laying down or on my side. So it would be 
It'll be challenging. Although, I mean, it's not super small in here. I mean, you know, it's it's fairly roomy. I mean, for what it is. <laughs> About to hit it. I will see y'all later. Just gonna lay here. It is early again. It's 740. About to lay here, do some reading, drift off to dream. Fortunately, it's not supposed to be as cold tonight as it was last night, and the wind is almost non-existent, which is the best feeling in the world. So, it's going to be a good night. All right. Oh, wait. I just found something in my pocket. I've got to show you guys. This is a teeny tiny flashlight. You got to see it. You got to see it. It's pretty cool. Let me just show you part of it. It's got a little LCD screen on it. How's our battery look? 100%. Shoot. Let's give it a little trial run in here. Right now, when I'm in here, I just have a little Lucy lamp. It's perfect for reading, too. I'll just lay it right here by my head. Put the book where the camera is, and I can see pretty well. Uh-oh, I can't see it. I think it's right here. Boom. So I'm on level one. Wait. Two. Wait. How does it go? Turn on. Oh, that's, I locked it. I need to learn the things. Oh man, I forgot how to unlock it. Darn. Oh, that's not it. Oh, that was turbo. That'll kill you right there. But, like, the cool thing about it, it's got an LCD screen on it. I got level two, I got 19 hours and 33 minutes left. Level three, 65 lumens, I have six hours and 50 minutes left. Level four, 200 lumens, I have two hours and 44 minutes left. All that's on my LCD screen. Pretty wild. Back to level one. I have 65 hours and 26 minutes left on level one. 15 lumens level two, 20 hours and 29 minutes. Let's, I gotta, I gotta unzip and we'll show y'all turbo. Hey, this is a Nightcore flashlight too. It's the uh, 4K NK N2 4K. What's it called? It's the T4K. I guess it stands for tiny 4,000 lumens because it's tiny. It goes up to 4,000 lumens. Check this out. All right, here we are. We're just on level one, right? Not too amazing. Here we are, level two. Pretty good. Good bit brighter. Now, here we are, level three, 65 lumens. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. Level four, 200 lumens. Okay, not too bad. Now watch this. Turbo. Ho. Lee smokes. Is that not crazy? All that from this little guy here. Are you kidding me? Do you see the turbo? Let me watch this. Watch this. Let's do it again. Boom! Look at that crap! Oh, that's ridiculous. Nightcore. Check it out. Link in the description. Alright, so this little light's got a few things going for it. Not only is it waterproof and it's rechargeable, but it has the LCD screen on it which tells you how much time you have left on your charges or on your different levels. And it also will tell you how much charge you have, you know, like it's got a battery meter on it too. But then it has that freaking turbo, which is wicked awesome. Now granted, the turbo only works for 10 seconds at a time, but you really don't need it for any longer than that. Like if you wanted to use this as like a self-defense light and just blind the ever-living goodness gracious out of somebody, it would work. Or if you just need to find something real quick or signal somebody, awesome for it. But I mean, and really truly, level four, 200 lumens is still pretty good. And I mean, cause you don't need turbo much, but you got it if you need it. So check it out, pretty cool little light. Uh, and they also have larger lights that still have the LCD screen on it. I mean, I totally, totally love the LCD screen. Now I get a lot of companies who contact me and say, hey Trip, wanna send you this gear to try out and test. And like 95% of the time, I'm like, no, thank you. You know, that just doesn't fit my needs right now. It's, you know, it's not unique and different. Well, this is unique and different. That's why I said, uh, yes, please send it to me. And holy cow, is it awesome. All right, <laughs> now I'm going to bed. Thank you, Nightcore, for sending me this sweet, awesome light. I mean, it's hands down my favorite light that I own. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, granted, my Olight headlamp is very awesome too, but this just has some amazing features that just make it over the top. All right. Good morning. I've been up about an hour. Just kind of chilling here in the bivvy. Got it opened up because I was getting a lot of condensation in here, which is kind of a, 
a normalish thing. So just open it up, kind of let it start venting out. And I was drying it off with uh, the sock that I wore yesterday. <laughs> but because if you don't, it'll just like drip on you. And as you touch it, it'll just get all over your, your insulation. But I slept really good last night again, which is fantastic. Now I'm just kind of waiting on things, going to warm up a little bit. Fortunately, there's no wind or very little wind, so I'm not in a major rush. I want there to be plenty of light and maybe some sunlight out there when I get out there so I can stay warm. About 200 yards through the woods there is the main river, and I've heard a couple of toes go by this morning, so I'm kind of excited to get out there and cruise through the harbor and see all the big ships and stuff today. That kind of stuff interests me. But right now, oh, this interests me. Cause it's it is cold. Like your hands just they don't they don't work long out there. I'm gonna go ahead and put down some breakfast, get my system working and warming myself up because it's, it's still a little bit chilly. So I'm gonna start with some not quite frozen sardines, thank God, and a couple fatties. Enjoy this. Then we're gonna start kind of packing up and uh, being, make sure everything's decently dry or drying while we're getting ready as best we can. So I have my sleeping bag laying over the top because. Surprisingly, uh, the only place that was wet was the inside, the underneath of my bivy, but the outside was completely dry, so it's kind of, you know, it's kind of how it goes. But it's better than being cold, because the bivy did keep me a lot warmer. Like, just the temperature inside the bivy versus outside is very noticeable, so I was appreciative of that, and I'll deal with the moisture. You can't put away. So now it's time for a step that I'm kind of dreading, is fueling up the boat. So just checked. And we're pretty close to empty according to this gauge. Granted, I've never tested it by putting a stick down in here, but it's probably fairly accurate. You open it up and look in here, and it appears that it's pretty low. So, so it's now it's time to get that little leaky joker, and hopefully we can just empty the whole thing in here. <clears throat> we got a funnel this time, though. Granted, it's a really small funnel. <laughs> it's better than nothing, though. Let's see how this goes. I got the cockpit of the boat cleared out just in case we have a spill. And I've got an old Frog Togs cool chili pad thing, a little chamois to mitigate our spill. I think this is actually gonna go fairly well is my prediction, because we should be able to pour it in there pretty easily. Just gonna have to go nice and slow because we've got eight gallons to transfer. Minus however much we lost through the slow leakage. Oh yeah, nice, whoo, oh, I'm getting tired. Here it almost full. Oh. Okay, that's it. Perfect. Hey, that went really well. There's probably almost a gallon in there. Maybe not quite. Yeah. So that means we burnt about eight gallons. I think we ran like 60 miles maybe or so. So we'll kind of calculate our fuel mileage for that. Was that like eight miles a gallon, nine miles a gallon, something like that? Okay, not too bad. Cool, and we didn't spill much. I'm really happy about that. All right, it's time to get underway. Wasn't too hard to get out of there. All right, it's a nice day. A little bit warmer than yesterday. Loving it.
That's a bridge for a train. You know the barge that we just got on film? That barge just a few minutes ago went under that. That whole thing had to lift up. Man, if we'd have been 10 minutes earlier, we'd have seen it. Seen a lot of neat stuff. I like it. Going into the heavy commercialized area. Right there. And so I'm getting my VHF radio out. So I'm going to turn it on and try and monitor some of the commercial traffic. I think you go to like channel 13. Let's see what we got. I'm going to take this and uh, maybe it'll stay in my cup holder here. Oh, dude, we got a, a crane unloading a container ship up here. So cool. But we just got to watch out. We make sure we're not in the way of... There's a lot of tugs and stuff moving around. Rolls of steel. So those big rolls of steel that they make like metal roofing out of. Huh. The Green Reapers! boat works dude look at these cats working man holy <laughs> that boat says no smoking <laughs> in huge letters <laughs> I'm guessing that's a fuel tanker <laughs> dude Mr. Burt This is amazing. I'm having so much fun. I should just came here the first day. Just hung out here. Oh, so this is where they're working on boats. It's like a dry dock. That's a tugboat right there on the on that thing. That thing sinks down in the water, tugboat pulls on it, and it lifts the boat out of the water. Over here you got some tugboats up on the dry dock. Okay, there's something super cool right over there. Super freaking cool. We're gonna wanna check it out. Flare, flare. Oh no way. Dude, no way. So they're building ships inside there, military ships. Whoa, man. No kidding. Oh, it's like a trimaran. Whoa, dude. And there's another one right here. I'm gonna like come out and be like, think I was that sort of spy or something. Dude, look in there. You gotta be kidding. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. There's the Perdido Queen dinner cruise. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. I mean, actually, it's not like super cool, but I'm just excited to be here. Now, we got some more military ships down there. It's like a military harbor. I've 
I'm not gonna go very close to that. <laughs> Cause I probably will get thrown in jail or something. <laughs> I don't need that. It's a good video, but I don't, it, it's not worth it. That's what they're building in those buildings. I don't know what they are, but man, are they sweet. Oh wait, I guess they're, I guess these are new ones too. I'm guessing that they're building the hole in there and they move over here to maybe fit it out maybe. Look at the trimaran. Oh, that's sweet. That is sweet. I'm glad there's not a lot of commercial traffic out here today. I mean, there's some, but it's not, I mean, I, I don't consider it bad because I'm sure to them, I'm just like an annoying little gnat. Just, you know, I'm buzzing back and forth across the harbor, checking out every, every little thing. But I'm having a lot of fun. This is, this is very, very cool to me. I mean, just look at all these ships. We got a bigger military ship than a uh, cargo ship. I don't even know what they are. Big old boats is what they are. Barge. Look at those friggin' huge boats. Look at that one. A little low in the front. They're probably either loading or unloading or so like most of the cargo's in the front. You know, the oil or whatever it is. Look at that sucker. That joker's a mile long. It's not really, but it's really big. Oh, no way. We get to see the propellers on this one. Check it out. So that's a dry dock. So that little floor sinks down into the water, boat pulls on top, then it raises up, lifts the boat out of the water. Look at those darn propellers. Yeah, there's some guys up there on the back of the boat pointing. I bet he's like, hey, Jim, come look at this idiot down here in this little boat. <laughs> Probably something like that is how their conversation went down. <laughs> Whatever, I'm having a good time. I've got to be all in the waves. There, there's not many people out here today. Not many boats. There's definitely no other boats like me. <laughs> I'm the only idiot. Oh. Uh, Wow, the shipping containers back there. Oh, boat. Up in there. Look at those suckers. Wow, millions of containers. All right, now we're out to Mobile Bay. All right, so we're gonna see how rough it is out here. Uh, there's something I'd like to see that's several miles south of the bay. Whoa, snap, big waves. Open Bay is huge. Thank goodness it's food today. Nice and flat, baby. Just made a run. I think we're at Dog River. I think where this is. Some marinas and stuff in here. I just wanted to come see it, check it out. You know, I like coming to marinas and checking out what's going on in the boats and stuff. So, just gonna cruise through real quick. Look at that sucker. There we go. Look at the seal there. I just like looking at boats, really. <laughs> I just like being on the water. I don't know. Cruising. Having me some jerky. Sweet jalapeno. What an exciting cruise this is turning out to be. I think we're good on fuel. We've been 35 miles so far today. Never been down this close to it. I've only seen it driving by on the interstate there. She's a big beauty. 
Wow. Pretty magnificent. That shot right there, man. Wow. That's pretty awesome. Look how big and huge this bay is. I mean, I know you can't tell it. It's huge. I'm glad today's a little warmer. It's not so breezy. It's not quite, you know, it's definitely not perfect. <laughs> but it's better than it has been the last couple of days, for sure. Now we're gonna cruise over here. We're gonna run between the two interstates. I was told that's a good safe place to run because remember when, when we left on this trip remember all the shallow water we had to deal with we're going back into that same area now so if we run in between the interstates i think it's supposed to be good to go thank god Folks, thanks so much for watching. I'm glad y'all tuned in. Unfortunately, I deleted the last clip, but that's okay. I'll let you know that I was super excited to finish this adventure. Take care, God bless, and I will see you in the next adventure.